So, Paul, uh, we'll start with your team news first. Any new injuries after the win at uh, Yeovil at the weekend? Uh, no, I think we're, we're all OK. Um, obviously, we got a couple back last week in terms of being involved in, in the squad. We've, obviously, we're speaking prior to training today. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I had a good training session on, on Tuesday with them. Um, so, hoping that that can only build... On, on the strength of the squad, the the other injuries, no one's you know due back for the next couple of weeks realistically. So, kind of as we are, so could certainly do with the the ones that have returned and, and the current squad being being fit and available to us. Yeah, in terms of Jordan Maguire, Drew just first up because obviously he's been on the bench for the last two games, hasn't got off the yeah. bench. Where yeah. is he in terms of fitness for you? Because he's obviously now been, it's about two months since he last played, since he got the injury against Bromley originally. Yeah. Where, where, where is he? How close is he to getting onto the pitch? Um, he, I think look, he, if, if he trains well today uh, and tomorrow, then I'll be happier in terms of him being, you know, stepping onto the pitch and contributing. Um as you kind of pointed out there, it is quite a while, probably longer than some people might think since he, he was back uh, last playing. Um, you know, Jordan will always think that he can go on the pitch and make a difference. And, and in one given moment, he probably can. Um, there's also, you know, the other part of it. Uh, it's not simply about, you know, a delivery, or, but we know that the quality that he's got, so given you know, different situations within games, he might be more called upon for him to, to make that impact. Um, but, you know, I think he's, he's, he's desperate to get involved, you know, which is obviously good from my point of view. Tuesday was a, a toughish session that he, he came through along with Ryan and, and the rest of the squad. So we're hopefully certainly going in the right direction. Um, and I'm sure he'll he'll have his, his part to play, whether that's Saturday, whether it's Tuesday or or you know beyond that. And you said on Saturday after the game that you didn't think it was quite Jordan's game. Um, with the games coming up against teams that are in such you know strong opposition, could those more be a little bit more suited? Where one moment of brilliance could be the difference between two very good sides. Sorry, I just lost the last part of that, Elliot. I think you might have been saying that. He- you know, his quality could be the difference. Yeah, in these games yeah. that you've got coming up against the, the top teams, that, that little bit of quality in, in the um, could be the defining factor, obviously. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, you never... None of us have got a crystal ball, unfortunately, but, you know, it might just be a set play. It might be, as you said, a moment of quality. It might be one mistake. Um, we're never quite sure, and that's why we all... I guess going to games are a bit uncertain of what's going to, going to happen, but uh, you know that was a big part of bringing him to the football club. Was we felt that he got some extra quality in a a small uh, amount of games. I think he he showed some of that, um, but I think even fitness wise, was quite quick to point out he's not what we consider fit when he came. Um, would have to do some work on that side of it. Started to, we then got the injury. So that's obviously not going to suddenly have it got to the levels where we want him to be. And whether I like it or not, I think that will be pre-season um, where we've got the best chance of, of getting Jordan where we think he needs to be. And if he can do that, then I think all of a sudden you've got, you know, a an even better better player uh, and someone that you know you'll be confident in uh, in no matter what situation you know that the opposition presents you um so that's what we are looking forward to that without wishing the next however many uh, weeks away uh, but yeah look we want him to contribute this season as well and I know I said I know he's desperate too he the other day did a bit of extra running as well um and we'll keep trying to push, but at the right sort of speed. So hopefully he is available to us. Is Ryan Taylor pushing to start the weekend or is that a little bit too soon? That's a, a, a bit of a dilemma. 
in truth. Again, would I have liked him to have had a bit more training than what he's had? Uh, yeah, I, that's a truthful answer. He, I've been interested with him and Jordan today, how they feel and how they get through training. Uh, because as I said, Tuesday was a, a relatively tough session. Um, and we'll see how their bodies react, you know, if there's a bit of stiffness there today. Uh, and, you know, monitor that, whether it's through the data, whether it's, like I said, just through clearly me watching training and getting the views of staff of, because again, players don't really, tell, often don't tell you the truth. They tell you what they think you want to hear and that they're good and they want to be in the team and, and want to be playing. Now, John Lewis has obviously had his loan extended with, with York. Was that just the right decision for all parties with Manny coming in as well? Yeah, I think so. That was the conversation that I had with uh, Lenny just prior to last weekend. And he's, look, he's, he's a fantastic lad. He understands it. There was genuinely not a thought to bring another striker in in his absence. But because of the situation that occurred in training, losing Ryan and, and Tris off the training ground the same day um, was a necessity. And ultimately, that's kind of changed the dynamic of it slightly. Um, this time, because we're into a second month and beyond, we've got the call back in there. So there's no big drama as in, you know, we've, that's him, we've lost him. Is there um, if we feel that it's it's required? Uh, plus, with Lenny's first couple of games getting called off, he didn't get quite as much football. Understandably, he hasn't a couple of the games he's come off earlier, which is, like I say, understandable. Um, went to watch him the other night uh, against Curzon, got through the game. So, you know, and, and looked in good shape, in fairness to him. Uh, I think you can already see the, the benefit of of him playing minutes and, and getting game time. So we would we'll keep monitoring that and, you know, monitor our situation as well, obviously. Uh, but we take a lot of comfort in the fact that we can get him back in if uh, if we feel it's right. Is it a 24-hour recall clause you've got? Yes. Yeah. Is it harder with him being on loan by the fact that he's out of contract in the summer or does that not really make a difference? No, I I, I think I, I know enough about Lenny and... and the, the player, he certainly knows us, so I don't think there's any big uh, deal. I've watched, I watched that game and a couple of others um, on, on video. We both went and watched him the other night, so he's not, I don't feel like really missing out. You know, he's a player that we've had at other clubs before. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's not like we've had someone for a month and we're still not quite sure who he is, what his character is, what his strengths are. So he's, he's, we're all comfortable with the situation, I think. I know you tend to choose your or make your team selections game to game rather than based off of previous performances, but I imagine a few of the players that played against Yeovil must have given you a little bit of food for thought. Yeah, I think I said after the game, I got I, I know going into this weekend I'm gonna have some decisions and certainly wasn't ready to to make those decisions straight after the game or and still aren't at that point entirely. Of course, you're giving it more thought. But as I've said uh, previously, you know, I could lose three players in training today and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, all your plans have gone to pot. So got an idea of clearly how we would like to play some. Um, maybe strengths and, and weaknesses of of what we feel, uh, you know, Boreham Woods team present, uh, and we'll look to see, you know, implement them. We've done a bit of that on on Tuesday, regards, uh, you know, the shape of the team, etc. Um, but I think what I would say is last week, it, you know, I was delighted to get the win, and it was very difficult conditions, but I wasn't coming away gushing about the performance. And again, maybe this is where I, I don't help myself sometimes, but I'm not one to you know, try and tell you a story or paint a picture that I don't think is genuine. And I've said it, we've been winning games lately. We were playing better when we were losing some of these games. Not all, admittedly. But so, so the result changes how people, you know, other people perhaps see things. Um, try and be a lot more kind of balanced and 
I guess, thoughtful about it all. Um, but we are 100% at a point where the results kind of mean more. But I do like to buy into the thought process that the better performance you have, the more likely you are to win at least. You know, again, we've seen that at times that that doesn't guarantee you anything and fully aware of that, but you can certainly give yourself a better chance. Boreham Wood, of course, coming up this weekend. It's the first time you've faced them this season due, due to the, the quirks of the fixture list and the various rearrangements. What have you made of them this season? They're clearly having a you know an excellent season. I don't think it's... I think the FA Cup runners obviously catapulted their um, you know, media attention and probably brought their club into a lot more spotlight than just if they were doing well in the league. Because I think overall, the, the league form and position isn't a massive surprise. If you look at the, the record, I think they had, was it last season where they didn't do quite as well? Prior to that, had been in the playoffs. I can remember them losing to Tranmere in, in the playoff final. So it, it's not a surprise. And I think anyone that, that thinks it is or, um, you know, aren't probably doing their, their own work properly or don't understand the league. Um, so, yeah, they, they're having, they are having an excellent season. But again, not quite as much a surprise to me as or other people see it that way rather than to, to myself. And got a lot of experience in the squad. Um, a lot of players that have endured and enjoyed uh, some very good seasons. When we get to this stage of the season, do, do these games matter a little bit more in terms of them being six-pointers? Um, I, I, again, I try not to get too sort of caught up in it. If, it. if it was a playoff game, clearly it's all on the day. I still think Whatever happens Saturday, we're not we, we're nowhere near at the point where that's definitive. Um, a win for us would be excellent. We would have to break their home unbeaten record, which is a task in itself. And that is a, a great achievement by uh, the squad and, and the manager there to, to be mid-March and, and not having suffered a, a home defeat. Um, but, you know, I don't think we need to in my opinion, build it up. We know it's a big game, it's a tough game. But again, let's see where we're at all of a sudden. I think you get to a point where it's kind of do or die. We've got the next four are tough, clearly. And that picture might be very different than what we currently sit in. It might be very similar, depending on not only how our results go, but how others go in the league, because we can try and influence our results, of course. Um, but we can't, and no one knows what's going to happen in the other games. We've, we've still a lot of teams involved. Um, there'll be good results, bad results for us, as as there probably was in midweek. Yeah, after beating Notts County in sort of the last of these big six, you know, these six-pointing games, that was probably the last one that you played. Is there a, a renewed confidence and belief amongst the players as much as anything that they can get results against these big teams because the record hasn't been amazing against the top 10 teams. You beat Wrexham, but then beating Notts County in the last one, has that sort of given the players a little bit more belief? Um, I think you'd have to ask them. From my point of view, what I've taken from those games is I think we've performed in, in every one, maybe the weakest performance, possibly Solihull, where I still thought there was enough in the game for us, but conceded a second goal at a bad time. Um, obviously conceded a poor first goal. But in, in the main, I think we've more than held his own, albeit admittedly as record, we would like to have been better. Um, I said, for example, the three home games that we've suffered defeats and I don't think we deserve to lose any of those. The facts are we did. But performance levels, it, I'm not, you know, I don't think we've played a game yet and touch wood, it's the same after Saturday where we've, we haven't we have kind of turned up and have just rolled over. Um, I think we have been very competitive and teams have come away very complimentary about us and knowing that they've been in a, in a tough game. But as I said, we are obviously reaching a point where the points and result is going to uh, 
influence, you know, what the remainder of our season looks like. And then just finally, just wondering if there have been any further discussions on, on new contracts with any of Harry Clifton, Michi Efforty were a couple that had been spoken about previously? Um, talks are kind of ongoing, uh, but, you know, we kind of, a bit of scheduling and things like that, it's not the be all and end all. Um, but yeah, we talk, talks are ongoing, so no, no news to report as yet. Um, but you know, hopefully things are moving in the right direction with with one or two players. That's great. Thank you very much, Paul.